Hello, I am Toru Takano from Brinku General Medical Center. I am going to introduce the discussion among experts in Japan on thyroid cancer overdiagnosis. It is well known that when overdiagnosis prevails, the opinion of expert is divided due to conflict of interest. A typical example is that when thyroid cancer overdiagnosis prevailed in Korea, a wide dispute among experts arose whether or not to continue thyroid screening. In April 2021, the editorial board of the Journal of the Japan Thyroid Association, JTA, decided to publish a special issue on thyroid cancer overdiagnosis. One of the JCJTC members, Sanae Midorikawa, was assigned as the editor. This special issue includes seven articles written by the JCJTC members whose names are listed here. The content of each article corresponds to the lecture in the JCJTC symposium. So please visit each site if you are interested. In some of these articles, the concern about the harm of silo screening was described. After this special issue was published, the JTA board published its announcement, saying that the opinion expressed in this special issue is not the mainstream of JTA. Silent experts in Japan have strived to overcome overdiagnosis, and JTA continuously supports silent screening in Fukushima. Also, it requested that the editorial board publish article designated by the board that criticized the content of this special issue and supports the silent screening in the coming issue. This is the next issue published this October, entitled Current Status of the Thyroid Examination in Fukushima Health Monitoring Survey. The editor was Professor Shunichi Suzuki, Fukushima Medical University. This special issue is a little bit weird. Contrary to the title, three of five articles are not related to the thyroid examination at all, and no opinion was presented which directly opposed those in the article in the previous issue. These are the two articles that deal with the thyroid examination in Fukushima. One is by Professor Hiroki Shimura, another by Professor Shunichi Suzuki. Now I'm going to introduce the highlight of these two articles and present the comment from the JCJTC members. First, they definitely claim that there is no evidence to prove overdiagnosis in Fukushima, and all the cancers treated would have presented clinical symptoms if they had been left untreated. We think the spread of overdiagnosis is evident in Fukushima because the steep increase in cancer incident together with no change in cancer mortality, which is now observed in Fukushima like Korea, is a typical sign of overdiagnosis. And it is hard to believe that all cancer in Fukushima was future clinical cancer. Papillary microcarcinoma PMCs are frequent, frequently found after the 30s, and most of them remain asymptomatic for a lifespan. So, like curve D in this figure, it is generally recognized that PMCs already exist in teens, and their growth slows with age. If their assumption that all cases in Fukushima were future clinical cancer, PMCs do not exist at all. 
at least until 25 years old. Then they suddenly appear. Just before 30 years old, and they suddenly stop their growth like this. I would like to ask you now, can you believe it? The next discussion point is they claim overdiagnosis is denied from pathological findings. As many of you already know, overdiagnosis is judged by whether cancer is symptomatic or not. So, eventually, overdiagnosis can be identified only epidemiologically but not pathologically. Furthermore, it is well known that many small cell cancers with metastasis or invasion do not show symptoms for a lifespan. So, prediction if cancer will be symptomatic or not in the future is not possible. They also claim that overdiagnosis is denied because diagnostic procedures strictly follow the guidelines. We should remind that those guidelines were established based on the adult evidence, so it is not confirmed if they can apply to children or young adults. The extreme increase of juvenile cyro cancer incident in Fukushima, which reached 20 to 50 times, proves that such guidelines did not help control overdiagnosis. Finally, Professor Shimura explains that the residents wish to continue the cyrus examination because they are relieved after taking it. However, we have a different opinion. There is no benefit to detecting thyroid cancer in an early stage in asymptomatic children. On the other hand, we have to prepare for the severe harm of overdiagnosis. So, what we should prioritize is first, no harm to the children. Thank you very much for your attention.